to move to the next speaker who eventually show very beautiful Hokkien opera already uh, yesterday in the morning workshop and the evening performance on the story of uh, Panji, the adaptation from the uh, Indonesia literature. And uh, if we considering who else can replace him for the issue of a uh, Chinese opera, no one can really compete. Professor Dr. Tan um, Chua Su Pong from <laughs> from Singapore. So I give the floor to our master. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much uh, for you know in having me uh, in this conference. It has been a great uh, learning experience, and uh, I want to talk about. Uh, uh, I, when I was told that we should keep our time limit to 15 minutes, mm -hmm. I deleted all my outline and keep only the picture. So I have no outline to show you, so you have to listen more carefully. Uh, well, uh, I want to talk about really uh, what is Hokkien opera and what are the changes and what it means you know, for the people in Singapore. Uh, now, in Singapore, there are seven, uh, there, there are these eight uh, genres of Chinese opera. You know, Beijing opera, Cantonese, Hainanese, Hokkien, Huang Mei opera from Anhui province, uh, Li Yuan opera, and Teochew opera. You know, this opera, you know, you can see that Beijing opera is only 200 years old. Cantonese, 300 plus. Hainanese, 200 plus. Hokkien opera is only 100 years old. It's young. And uh, uh, together, like Yue Opera from Zhejiang Province, also the young, young, you know, art form. So on, on the one side, you can see all the, the, the different uh, history of the forms. And then you see that how many groups there are, you know, in Singapore. Uh, from, the, from the list, you can see that there are many more Cantonese operas, you know, than, uh, say, Hokkien or Teochew or, or Lian Opera. We'll talk about why. If you, get, if you look at when they come to Singapore, you can see that you know, uh, the, the earliest is the Cantonese and, and, and then the Teochew Opera, right? Uh, and why some of the forms are only, only arrived very late, you know, uh, in the 90s. So from, from, this, uh, from this table, you can also guess how they are developed. Now, Hokkien. Hokkien means that the, the, what they call the Mingnan, right? The, the Singaporean Chinese, 42% Chinese in Singapore are Mingnan, you know, uh, descendant. But it doesn't mean that they speak uh, Hokkien, all right? Uh, now, Hokkien opera is called different terms. It's called Mingju, you know, by many, many, many uh, Hokkien opera group in Singapore. They call themselves Mingju Tuan or Fu Jian Xi. In China, they call Xiang Ju. In Taiwan, call Ge Zai Xi. Sorry, I forgot to spell for you. So the same thing, but they are called different names. Uh, there, are, there are reasons for that, but uh, we don't have time to go into that. So in the very short history of uh, Ge Zai Opera, Hokkien Opera, uh, you know, it moved from the part of the religious festival uh, to film. Uh, there were many uh, Hokkien opera movies and then television screen. And television screen was very important in you know, uh, promoting Ge uh, Zai uh, Xi in Taiwan especially. Now, in, in Singapore, you know, these are the places that perform uh, uh, opera. The, the, the now, uh, you know, uh, the, this national theater was demolished uh, some, some years ago. The People's Theater, Renminbi Chang, and the Victoria Theater, and of course, more often you see this. You know, uh, since the pre-war days, they perform in at the Temple Temple Festival, like this one, Wang Simei. You see this. You know, you know, in the seventies, when we started the Flick Mandarin campaign, people predicted that all this will die in ten years' time, but you know, already. Uh, 40 years has passed, but it's still there. Okay, then, then 
these are the street opera at the temple uh, festival. This Hokkien opera was also performed in the amusement park, you know, uh, in the 50s, you know, weeks after weeks. Uh, then you can see that, you know, there are people taking pictures, many of them, uh, doing that. And if you go to the Gu Chai Ba Temple, when they stage this 100 days festival, every night there are four, five hundred people there. Uh, oh, it's, it doesn't move anymore. <laughs> What's happening? Can someone to... Oh, okay, okay. Oh. So we can... Actually, what Sui Beng talked about, you know, as, as the culture symbols, uh, uh, you know, everybody has to work hard you know, for the success of the production and how they, they, they identify themselves as a part of the, 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 the community. There, there are lots of similarity there. Now, my point is that why more Cantonese opera Right? Now, if you look at this figure, Cantonese is only 15%, right? But there are, the, there are many, many more Cantonese opera group there. Why? Why? You know, because there are various reasons. One is that Cantonese opera movies in the 50s, 60s were very important. So you have, you have groomed generations of, uh, a generation of uh, Cantonese opera watching, uh, you know, a public... Uh, uh, members of publics. So people who speak Teochew, Hainanese or whatever, they go to see this movie. All right, that's number one. Number two, nowadays, you know, we don't have independent school like Malaysia who actually keep Chinese as a teaching language. After 1987, all school in Singapore uh, use English as a, as a, a, a language of teaching. All right. So they lost their dialect. You know, they, they had lost you know, their, their, their Mandarin is not as good, yeah? So, but, and it is the Cantonese people who teach, who continue to speak to the children in Cantonese, but not the Teochew, not the Hokkien. There was a survey, it shows that the Hokkien or Hainanese or Teochew, only about 9-8% people speak to their children in the dialect, but not the Cantonese, yeah? Okay, so, in the Look at how can it, uh, Hokkien Opera came to Singapore. Now, 1930, it came. 1956, first and the only Hokkien Opera movie by Singapore artists were made. 61, the first Hokkien Opera movie from China was, was shown. Li Lian Shen Mai Zha Huo uh, and Yi uh, Chun Liu Shan. So many schools you know, started to perform this, this, uh, this uh, Li Lian Shen Mai Zha Huo in the 60s. Then in the 60s, four Chinese, uh, four Hokkien group from Taiwan, 74, 86. When they talk about this group, they perform at the People's Theatre for months, not weeks. Yeah? They can perform two months there. So, because of the Cultural Revolution, all the Chinese opera movies you know, were not uh, 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 made anymore. So there was, there was this discontinuity there. But then Singapore, you also remember this 83, the China group came for the first time. Singapore television made many, many uh, opera. Teochew, Hokkien, Cantonese, Hainanese. They make, you see, from 68 to January 80. Why they stopped in nine, January 80? Speak Mandarin campaign started in 1975. Why the dialect has gone? You have to go back to the elections rally, you know, in the 50s, when Mr. Lee Kuan Yew has to go speak in Hokkien, you know, to, you know, to, 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 the, uh, to, the, to the people. But uh, the next generation of politicians, you know, of the ruling party do not, not many of them speak the dialect. Anyway, so because there's the ban of dialect, and uh, not the ban of dialect, they, they discourage uh, the dialects. Uh. So, after the 80, the television, radio start stop, you know, broadcast any programs or movies, including the Hong Kong movies, uh, anymore. But that generation of people who watch all this on TV and movie house, you know, uh, continue to uh, be the very faithful audience of Hokkien Opera today. Now. 
I want to talk about this temple, uh, Gu Chai Ba Temple, Cheng Huang Miao. You know, they perform, if you go to Singapore, you know, uh, between March to August, you can go there every night. You know, these are local group and these are China group or Taiwanese group. So many of these group, uh, because of they perform the same temple, everybody who perform there will know that they have to do their best because they will be, you will be judged by the audience as you, com you are comparing with uh, the quality of the performances of other group. Finally, I want to talk about uh, these uh, four groups as an example. This street opera group performed at the temples is one type of uh, you know, opera group. There are the other type of group that is what you saw last night. Yeah, these are non-professional group. Yeah, they are non-professional group. Now, these four groups are very interesting example. Number one, Jade Opera Group. It is led by the star of the Hokkien TV Opera uh, from Taiwan. You know, the, the superstar Yang Li Hua partner, Hong Xiu Yu, now migrated to Singapore. That's what he was talking about, the first speaker. To about all the new immigrants. Would they practice? Would they, you know, teach, you know, uh, young people the music? Yeah? Would this immigrant who come to Singapore from Taiwan, from China, teach Hokkien opera? Yes. This superstar uh, company, Hong Xiu Yi, uh, uh, she was in her 20s when she came to Singapore in the 70s when they performed for months. And now she moved to Singapore uh, since about 15 years ago. She worked for the Chinese Opera Institute and then now formed her own group. Taiwanese influence, Taiwanese repertoire, Taiwanese style. Second, the group you saw last night, the composer's family from Zhangzhou, China. Uh, they came in the, uh, about 15 years ago, right? And uh, they worked for the Chinese Opera Institute for a number of years and now set up their own group, uh, the Jing Xiu, Yi Shu Zhongxing, the Jing Xiu Art Center. And then you saw the three young ladies in last night's performance. Yeah? They, 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 they set up this group called the Du Opera. You know? It's called Yan Xi, like Yan Xu, you know, meaning like continuity. These three young people are very interesting. Uh, you know, they are doing very interesting work. I told Sui Beng, you know, they just wrote a piece, a new piece to, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Singapore, uh, set in 1965. Uh, somebody from China came to visit Singapore and started to find that there's Noti Brata, you know, there's this Nasi Lama, you know, there's a different kind of Malay food, Chinese food, and then how they experience a multicultural society. So this group, are trying to do Singapore story, yeah? So their, their repertoire and their work uh, maybe differ from the, the first true group. Now, what is the Xiao Dong Tian? The oldest opera group, Xin Sai Feng, uh, was uh, dissolved last year, and they, these people set up a new group called Xiao Dong Tian, and they continue uh, to perform at temples with great popularity. You saw the photograph, how many people, you know, uh, uh, taking their, their video and so on uh, at their inauguration show. Now, uh, the next one I want to show you uh, some pictures before I do draw my conclusion. Now, the first one is, these are taken from the, from the Xiu Yi, the Jade Opera Group, uh, who had worked with me uh, for many years. What is this opera, you guess? Macbeth, Lady Macbeth and Macbeth, okay? Uh, so we call Witches and Warriors, uh, uh, Macbeth. This is their poster. They perform uh, many times. And when they perform Macbeth, straight time reports. This is her version of Panji. Uh, so this is the Panji of her group. It's different from the Panji from last night. You can see the costume. This is Panji again. This is what? This is Molière, okay? Performed at the Allion Francais. 
This is more than uh, Hokkien opera, of course. It's about this gangster, you know, Mali Tender. Okay? This is a uh, new opera called Tons of Gold. It was premiered at the Taiwan National Theatre. And, and as you can see, they are very young actors. You know, the, 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 the boys uh, sat in the front is the SMU student. And it was directed by an SMU uh, uh, third year student. And this is what? This is Breath Chalk Circle. Chalk Circle, you know, the last scene. What is this? This is Mahabharata. Okay, <laughs> this is Mahabharata. Uh, this is all Mahabharata. So we perform in Indonesia, we performed in Belgium last month or two months ago, and her group had also been to America, Bangladesh, doing Hokkien opera. Uh, this, is, this was uh, performed in Taiwan, uh, Yilan. What is this one? This is a Chinese classic. This is a ghost story from Liao Chai, The Painted Skin. Yeah. This is the Painted Skin. The Painted Skin. And, uh, well, uh, see, the emergence and development of any performing art form is conditioned by the history and the cultural environment of its origin. Hokkien Opera, as we know it, was born in Taiwan, flourished in Fujian province in China, and spread uh, to the Hokkien uh, 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 communities in Southeast Asia. And as a result of the very different social and cultural environment in these places, Hokkien operas of different places are developing distinctive features of their own. Uh, China group don't do Panji. Yeah? Uh, Taiwan group don't do Mahabharata. Uh, the, and uh, feature of their own, despite of the fact that they use the same dialect as the language of performance. And the last five points I want to make is first, the new media help to help, you know, help the, these traditional forms to be sustained because the duo opera, the three young actresses last night, you know, where do they learn their Hokkien opera? YouTube, you know, <laughs> it's just, they go to search and then they watch and then they learn, all right? Only then they later, you know, go to Taiwan for some training, they go to a Beijing opera teacher to train their movement. So the media, new media, have makes a lot of difference. And they all have Facebook, okay? And they have all their website. So they are connected, like what Sui Beng say, you know? By this transborder connection, you know, they assert, you know, uh, the, their identity. They also have the sense of achievement. And they know that there are many people out there doing the same thing. So they exchange their ideas through their emails. You no, know, they collaborate uh, with other people. As we collaborated with EC in Jogja, in 2008, and when Mr. Jokowi was the guest of honor. Um, so we, we have collaborated with also Taiwan, China, and, uh, and, and elsewhere. So I think uh, the new media make a lot of difference. You can always, uh, you know, um, and of course they, are, they also write reviews, you know, uh, uh, on, on their Facebook and so on. Number two is the, uh, the, the exchange in the recent years, like what what uh, what the Philippines now doing the nanny visa audit deleted <laughs> the nanny the na the nanning group uh, in Manila do the festival and invite all the nanning group in Southeast Asia Taiwan and China the same we had hosted Hokkien Opera Conference festival Xiamen did the same uh, Taipei do the same yeah so we we have all these festivals. Uh, you know, and conferences uh, to help to attract uh, young people and so on, yeah? And, and it is these exchanges that uh, we, 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 I think, uh, it's a very important platform uh, for them. And number three is that, uh, you know, strategy to promote to the young people. In Taiwan and China, they do a lot of competition. You know, you see on television, you know, all these five, six years old learning hockey and opera. You know? And in Singapore, we do not, we're not able to do that on television, but we organize the competition. 
And that is why the first prize winner was playing the, the old king last night, you know. So by doing competition, it really uh, helped to uh, search for new talents. Recently, the Teochew Opera Club in, in Singapore organized the Teochew Opera competition. We thought, oh, maybe they can get 20 people, you know. Actually, 87 people came. And the youngest competitor was uh, 12 years old. And then a, a, a 13 years old, a 14 years old. Uh, the, the second prize go to the 12 years old. The third prize go to the 14 years old, right? First prize went to a new immigrant who is 35. Uh, she married to, uh, and, uh, 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 to a Singaporean and moved to Singapore. And when she heard about the competition, she started learning. She started learning. We also have a university student who came to my talk on Teochew Opera. And she raised questions, and I, I found that she's from China and studying her master's degree in NUS. I say, and she needs to do her paper and interview me. I say, on the condition that you join the competition, then I can be interviewed by you. They said, how? I never learned. I said, no, don't worry. I introduced you to a very senior teacher. So she taught her for the first time, the first Teochew Opera song, and she went to the semi-final. Okay, these young people, why, why, why they, why they, why they uh, know how to sing Hokkien Opera or Teochew Opera, very young people? Because their grandmother uh, just played the CD to them when they were born, you know? So when a baby time, they listen to the Teochew or Hokkien Opera all the time. Okay, the, the, another point is the, the, oh dear, I cannot read what I wrote. <laughs> uh, never mind, I probably will come back during, during the, the, the question answer session. I'm sorry, I cannot read anymore. <laughs> all right, so with that, I will conclude. You can see how a form, an, a, 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 a folk performing form, you know, travel and how it changed over the year and how we new, use new strategy uh, to reach out to the young people. Now I remember this point. Uh, why Mahabharata? Why Macbeth? Uh, why Snow White and Cinderella? You see, in school in Singapore, you want to present it to the children. Uh, you get a grant art education grant from the National Arts Council to go to school. But these kids, you know, they do not know Chinese history. Eh? They do not know what's Three Kingdoms or, or Dream of Red Chamber. They do not know. But they know Snow White. They know Cinderella. So we do Cinderella as Hokkien opera. You know, we do this story. And we do, this is a strategy to reach out to them. You know, and also, why Macbeth? Because you do Macbeth, the British Council people will come, you know, the, the straight time will report about the show and so on. So these are some of the strategies of the Hokkien Opera Group to reach out to new audience. Thank you very much. Kokuma <laughs> Kaap. Thank you. Thank you so much to Ajahn Chu Su Pong. And um, as the, the um, timeline statement, actually we we about to, to close, but... Uh, I think we should offer five more minutes for Q&A and I would like to call upon the, all the speakers come back to this panel for the question and answer session. Maybe you know, some few remarks or few um, questions from the audience. Please, uh, all, all the participants. Yes. Okay. Uh, grab your mic first. Jan Viti, grab. Yes, I saw the uh, dragons and the lions uh, came from China and stayed dragon and, chi and, and, and uh, 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 lion. Um, but the operas keep changing, picking up you know, Snow White and whatnot you know, and became more fused. Uh, do you have any kind of fusion between the dragon and the lion? What, what, what do you mean, the, the, the fusion? The, the, you know, 
cross breeding. Uh, I think in in I was just uh, trying to tell, say mm. that uh, you know in the dragon dance especially they have created a batik dragon, uh -huh. so the painting is on the dragon is uh -huh. is like the batik star. Yes. But I think the form itself uh -huh. is, um, is 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 symbolic of Chineseness and uh -huh. you know fortune and good luck and it's tied to ritual. So I think uh -huh. it's very hard to change the. The, the, the form itself. The form itself. Yeah, see. but they develop new techniques. Mm -hmm. You know? I see, I so see. the essential form is there, like you yeah. have to get the green vegetable or yeah. you have to follow the pearl, but they do different formations, you know, they perform oh, at see. night, they add mm -hmm. yeah, luminous mm -hmm. lights, that kind of thing. Because uh, yeah. in, in my area in northern Thailand, there's an animal which is a mix between the two of them. Mm. Uh -huh. so like between. Yes, they, 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 yeah, they cross breeding between the two. You know, the dragon, I don't know who is the male or female, but, uh, uh, but uh, we, come up, we call that animal mom. Mom is the, uh, a type of lion which climbs the wall, and sometimes it, it flies over things and becomes a, a symbol of a, a species you know, animal. And uh, it's, it has the face uh, pretty much like a civet, a cat. I think in the case of Malaysia, I'm mm -hmm. not generalizing for the whole of Mal uh, Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. uh, because the lion is a symbol of ethnic identity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, they try to keep the form as, as it lion. is rather than try to hybridize it. I so um, I think at one point, one of the ministers suggested that uh, why don't you just change your drag lion dance into a tiger dance because tiger can be found in Malaysia. So there was like huge protests against this because you know it is not Chinese anymore if you change it to a tiger dance. So it's, it's, it's just tied to this ethnic identity and trying to project your identity in, in a political situation. But you know, nevertheless, I think maybe if the situation becomes better in 20 years, 10 years, the, drag, the lion and dragon might combine, might change. We, we, we don't know. Yeah? Oh. I think it depends on the political situation. Yeah, but, uh, but I could see your lion you know, mixed with a fish. It becomes a Singapore uh, image, you know. Uh, so um, that's why I'm asking, you know, if you, you crossbreed that somewhere also, you know. Uh, isn't it the, the, the marine lion? But in northern Thailand, we do have that animal since, I don't know, for four or five hundred years already, the mom thing. It mixed between the two of them and became the symbol of uh, the auspicious, auspicious animals. Not on the ground. Yeah? They always live on the walls or, in fact, over the arches uh, of the temples. You know? yeah. So it could, it's interesting, yeah, the, 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 the animal. Yeah? It's uh, called mom. I'd like to comment on that because the... Wickberg, his analysis is that there are two movements of uh, the Chinese from the mainland down to mainland Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. the and the other one is Chinese. maritime route. Yeah. So uh -huh. these are two traditions, I, I think, see. that yeah. are evolved, that has evolved over the mm -hmm. past uh, mm -hmm. several hundred years. Mm -hmm. And it is probably that, it, that the styles here are following mm -hmm. what came down from the north and not what came from the south. That may be the uh, explanation for that. Uh, uh, the overland and the overseas. And the and the overseas. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ajahn Viti. Very interesting that the, 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 the overland immigrant, they mingle also with the Naka. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, 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 the lion, the dragon, and Naka, when they mix and, and make that uh, mom, as uh, Ajahn Viti uh, talk, uh, also uh, another interesting aspect. Um, any other question? Uh, yes, from the Philippines. Yes, I have uh, two questions uh, to Tan Soi Beng, but I think the other two panelists can also answer it. Um, when we say that the lion and uh, or the practice uh, help build ident common identity, are we talking about the identity of the people who belong to the lion's club? Or are we talking about the identity of the larger community in which the community is taken? So in other words, my other one question is therefore, does the unity, ident common identity of the people in the Lions Club extend to identity in the community? 
so that uh, it becomes now a community thing. The other question is, once the identity is built, is the identity become so strong that it becomes resistant to incorporate other identities? Let's say we are now Chinese, but we are now ASEAN, you know, or we are now member of a nation, or does the identity become more of a problem because it becomes too tight and too close-knitted? So, first question, does the identities reach out to a larger community? And second, once formed, is it become too resistant to bridge with other groups? All right. And maybe the others can also answer it. Yeah. Um, yeah, answering your first question, I think the identity, the Chinese identity reaches out to a larger community because my point uh, which I tried to state at the beginning was that you know the Chinese are very diverse. They're actually not unified at all. They are fighting with one another. You know, if you are Chinese educated, you are English educated. You you know you don't mix with one another because you can't communicate or you you belong to different political uh, parties and so on. But uh, there is this feeling that that you know the Chinese culture but Chinese cultures are the very diverse yeah is being you know the Chinese are being assimilated so I think certain specific forms of uh, performing arts like the lion and the, and the and the dragon have been selected you know by the Chinese communities you know as a common uh, expression of of their identity not not all the forms uh, have been you know selected uh, yeah. But um, a as you all know, in Malaysia, it's a very segregated uh, society. Yeah, so um, because the, the Chinese feel that they are being assimilated, then they try to project their identity, their separate identity more. But as I said earlier, that you know, we don't know what's going to happen in ten years, twenty years, because now the situation is not good. Yeah. So when the, when when uh, ethnic polarization happens, then uh, you know dif different groups try to emphasize their own identities by emphasizing, you know, their separate uh, cultural forms. Yeah. But if if the situation becomes better somehow, you know, then hybridization will, will occur. Uh, that, that's how I feel. Uh, yeah. But that doesn't mean that hybridization is not occurring at all because you know it is occurring in other aspects like in popular music or popular theatre, drama, contemporary works especially. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate anything? Yeah, I, I, yes, yeah, the, you know, the identity is not just among the practitioners and the audience, right? But also you know, it, it, it reach out to the larger community because you know, with the Hokkien opera, Cantonese people will also go to support it. The Jewish speaking audience will also go there. And also it is part of the larger uh, community because in Singapore, the, the, the national uh, policies is to include all the multicultural heritage. So in our case, yes, it is part of the uh, you know, Singapore uh, cultural heritage. You know, you can see this from, from all the minister, you know, messages, speeches, and, and also in practice, the National Arts Council do have a specific grant for traditional theatre. Yes. Yes. Um, half past twelve already. Um, are there any more questions? Uh, okay. Uh, how maybe just one more question? And then we, we, we have to declare our... Uh, All right, thank you. Very short questions. My name is Buniyani from Jakarta. Um, in the Philippines, we have Jose Rizal, who has Chinese blood. In Thailand, we have uh, former Prime Minister, uh, Sinawat, who, who is a Chinese, who has Chinese blood. And... Um, in uh, Singapore, I think majority of uh, Singaporeans are Chinese, while in Malaysia it has a large number of Chinese too. And uh, in Indonesia, okay, in my country, yeah. that uh, we have growing numbers of Chinese too, yeah. which uh, are uh, now, it seems that uh, there is a political tensions because of growing number of that, uh, because of, uh, yeah. There's a kind of, I don't say it is a threat, 
But uh, seeing, for example, in Thailand that uh, here uh, you have a uh, uh, Chinese uh, prime minister, and then maybe if the growing number of Chinese Indonesians coming there, and then it, it becomes dominations, and then, but maybe it, it doesn't make any sense. But all of those people, local Indonesians, uh, I mean, uh, have that kind of feelings. I mean, is there any, maybe of three uh, uh, panelists, maybe if you have any comments with that, maybe if we are talking about all of this kind of cultural identity, which has impacts on political life. Thank you. Yeah, maybe Singapore can be the loudest <laughs> answer. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> thank you for <laughs> thank you for your comment. Okay, thank you for your comments. Uh, the uh, <coughs> when I consider this panel, uh, I wanted to address uh, the lack of Chinese studies in Southeast Asia. Because the history of Southeast Asia has always been uh, uh, towards India, the concept of Indianization. But we have never really uh, taken any serious steps to study the influence of China on Southeast Asia. And it is not in our history books. And this is because of uh, many factors, uh, the how the European scholars viewed Southeast Asia during the time, the construction of Southeast Asia, and even the American school of Southeast Asia remained in that European lineage. So. Yes, so uh, having seen all this uh, in Indonesia, I interviewed Chinese musicians also. I went to Surabaya, and uh, in Solo we had, during the, after, after the fall of Suharto, everything Chinese came out in Indonesia. So we are now in a position to look into this aspect of history of, uh, not only in music, but in all aspects of history. And I think our papers are a good contribution to this uh, objective. Um, and uh, would you like to say something? A, a very short response. I'm, I'm, you know, I was born in Indonesia, grew up in Singapore. And I see the changes, right? If you look at, you know, uh, after 1998, you know, the changes until now. You look at the official policy changes. I don't think the you know, Indonesian government uh, uh, keep any of those uh, uh, anti-Chinese policy. Because since then, if, if you look at the, the direct, director, uh, Directorate of Culture's uh, uh, activities, and also the, the great variety of uh, performing groups from Singapore and elsewhere invited to Indonesia to perform. You know, uh, uh, we went to Solo when Jokowi was the mayor and uh, we, we go back to Indonesia. We perform in Gedu Kesinian. We perform in all the prime venues. We perform in Kraton in Jogja and also uh, Solo. So I think uh, the, the tension uh, is not... Uh, like the old days, and, and also Indonesian, uh, I mean, Javanese and others are very open you know, to, to celebrate this diversity of Indonesian culture. That's how I feel. Um, I think, yeah, in, the, in Malaysia also, you know, since the 1990s with Bangsa Malaysia, One Malaysia, I mean, there is liberalization. Yeah, so... I think because of that, then you know more Chinese performances uh, are seen and reported about, and and so on and so forth, lah. So I don't think that it is. I mean, emphasizing your identity is really not not a problem. Yeah, at, at this point, you know, in many parts of Southeast Asia. And, and also, you see Indonesian group, you know, doing Chinese story like Trentiano Koma Theater. They did Xi Jin Kui for one month, full house. You know, Sampai Eng Tai from Bandung is going to perform, was performed in Singapore, and they're going to China to perform as well. Uh, this, it has changed. So I have to be the bad guy, cut all the question and answer and uh, conversation, because uh, due to the, the, the uh, clock on the wall, we have uh, uh, 30 minutes left for the performance at the main stage. Um, 
Actually, I, I, I wish we can have one more day discussion on the Chinese issue or even 100 more conference on the Chinese studies of uh, ASEAN. Um, hopefully, you know, um, next time the Anthropology Center, Silinton Center can, can offer this kind of um, floor of uh, exchange among us. But uh, we would like to say thank you, Kop Kun Mak, to our uh, speaker, Ajahn Tan Sui Beng, Ajahn Asio Nicolas, and Ajahn Chua Sui Pong for your relevant knowledge of uh, today. And uh, enjoy your lunch.